Hello and welcome back to another Flutter tutorial. In this video, I'll be talking about how to create reusable widgets and how you can make your code simple, reusable and easy to maintain. So let's not waste our time and see how to do it. This is a main.dart file which is the entry point of our application where I have set an empty container with a white background as the home. So that's what we see on the right side in the simulator. Okay. Now for this demo, we need some screens. So let me create a folder and a screen named login screen. And we need one more screen, the home screen. And uh, let me quickly write the login screen, which is a stateful widget. Import the material package. Now let's quickly create the UI for the login screen. So an bar with title login, body, which is a container. The container will have the child which is a column and two text fields email and password so let's initialize the controllers for email and password and initialize the text field with corresponding controllers and a flag button which will say login okay now let's go to the main.dart file and replace the home container with the login screen okay so there is our login screen now let me create the home screen so home screen extends stateful widget import the material package and the build method is going to return a scaffold with an abba and title let's say home okay and body with an empty container with background color as white now let's go back to the login screen and on tap of the button let's open the home screen so that will be navigator dot push replacement because uh, let's think about it as a real login screen and we don't want a back button there so it's push replacement okay so okay i forgot a semicolon there so let's import the home screen okay now let's get into the real topic for this demo which is the reusable widgets right so here you can see we have two text fields so basically in a real world applications the text fields in an app will have the same look and feel right they will have the same color same kind of properties right so let's see how we can write it in two different ways so let me uh, write it the wrong way first and uh, i'll tell you what is the right way to do it okay so i'm just writing a static function which is going to return the text field okay then we are going to call this function i'm going to import the material package here okay and uh, pass in the controller and what are parameters we need okay then i'm going to call this function here so that will be utils dot get text field and pass in the controller okay so here you can see that nothing has changed in the ui but in our widget tree is something like a function is being called right it doesn't look like a widget is being added to the tree correct so this is definitely not the right way to do it but if you're doing like this you can do like a let's say i am adding a container and uh, you can provide this function as a child of the container so let me show that child you can pass in the function there this also works but still it doesn't look like a proper widget tree correct so the solution is reusable widgets so let's see how we can create a reusable text field uh, so that it will be uniform across the screens in our app and it will have the same theme and uh, the properties okay so let me create a new folder i'm gonna create a new file tf.dart you can name it any way you want and a class name as well you can name it any way you want so i'm just naming it here okay import the material package and uh, let's write a constructor so i'm gonna pass in a set of parameters for this widget okay controller in text help text prefix icon suffix icon is password enabled read only and border color now we have to declare all those constructor parameters 
all should be final okay icon data suffix icon final boolean is password enabled read only and the border color okay now i'm gonna return a container with a child text form field and i'm gonna supply all those properties if i'm not sending read only then it's going to be false so similarly if i am not sending is password variable then i'm setting it to false now let's set the decoration for this text form field focus border with the green accent border and similarly for enable border and border for border we are setting in the border color that's coming in so if it's not being sent then we are setting it to teal color and for hint text if it is null i'm setting it to empty and similarly for help text if it is null you can throw some error if you want at this moment if you're getting some null values but i'm not going to do that uh, for this demo but uh, it's up to you now let's set the prefix icon so if it is not being sent then it will be null so i'm setting it to null otherwise it will be icon and prefix icon icon inside prefix icon okay and for similarly for uh, suffix and enabled by default it will be true okay now let's go back to our login screen and add our widget okay now you can pass in those parameters it's okay if you are not sending some values some parameters because all are optional right so i'm gonna do the same thing for the password text field so here i'll be sending the is password which is set to true okay okay uh sorry so i'm gonna remove that okay so you can see that it's the same thing uh, as before like uh, when we wrote the functions right but now it looks uh, good and it's, it's it's looking like we have added some widgets right so what about let's create a new file and i'm gonna name it btn so this is going to be uh, the reusable button throughout our app okay so i'm gonna pass in an on press event and a text and additionally i'll be passing a color so the color is not just for uh, coloring the button but uh, i'll be explaining it in a short while okay so watch till the end now let's give some other properties to the button a shape which is a rounded rectangle border with a border radius of three okay and i'm setting the color to the parent container of this button okay uh, we have some other use for this color so we'll be i'll be explaining that so let's replace the flat button with our button and pass in the on press event and the text okay now let's try passing the color so colors dot green okay but i want the text to be white in color for all the buttons in my app okay so i'm just changing the common button component okay you can see that it has changed to white now i want the button to be horizontally expanded okay so i'm putting it inside a row widget and wrapping it with an expanded widget okay so now our component is just like any other flutter component right okay now let's try setting the prefix icon okay that's working so if i'm setting for password let's set it to lock open okay that's working so what if i pass in null right that's gone so it's completely customizable now so i want to create one more reusable widget so i want to show a forgot password link button i'm copying the button dot dot and renaming it to button link button dot dot okay and uh, renaming the class name to link button and i don't want a background color here so i am removing it okay so let's add the link button to our login screen pass in the text forgot password okay you are not seeing the link button right so let me restart the app and the reason why is we had copied the button widget right and it's in it's white in color 
So when I added the on press even, you can see the button, right? So let me remove the colors dot white and set the color, which is passed in. Okay, so let's pass the color, colors dot green. Okay, now you can see that our link button is green color, right? Okay, so we can use it anywhere and change the color according to our requirement. Okay, now let's change the color of the text field, the enable border to red. So you can see that both text fields are affected, right? So that's a common component. So it's going to affect uh, wherever it's being used. All right. So those were some of the uses of reusable widgets. Okay. Now let's go to our home screen and I'm going to add a settings icon in the app bar, which is going to open a settings screen. Okay. So let's create a new screen, which is the settings screen. And the settings screen is going to display a grid of colors and the user is going to select each color and we are going to change the theme of our app based on that okay so let me declare a list of colors static list of colors black 87 blue purple indigo green teal red amber brown and deep orange okay i think this should be enough to create a grid of colors okay so let's create a scaffold with an upper with uh upper sorry i typed it wrong okay and title it's gonna say settings okay and uh, the body sorry body which is going to be a container and color color stored white and a child which is going to be a column with children let's add a wrap widget and uh, the children will be a list of widgets so list of widget dot generate colors dot length and we need to return the cell from here, the each row cell. Okay, so let's create another reusable component, color cell, import the material package. So this is going to display a, just a color, a block of color. Okay, so it's going to accept a color as parameter. Now let's go to our container inside the build method and i'm gonna set the alignment the reason i'm setting the alignment is uh, in future we'll be adding a child which will be aligned to the center okay so right now i'm not adding the child so decoration will be a box decoration with the color okay all right so let's import it here and pass in the color okay and uh, let's go to the home screen and open the settings screen so let me copy the code from the login screen and paste it there and change it to settings screen sorry uh, there was a typo settings screen okay okay restart the app okay it's working but our back button is missing right so that's because i did a push replacement instead of push right okay so restart the app okay so it's working good so we didn't customize our app bar right so so if you hover over the app bar you can see that it's a stateful widget but it implements a preferred size widget right so it needs a size so let's see how we can uh, create a reusable app bar okay so class i'm gonna name it i app bar okay and i'm gonna extend a preferred size import the material package okay and uh, so it's going to accept a child so that you can set any child in the upper and the main thing is it's going to need a height okay and I'm gonna write a constructor that's going to accept the child which is required and the height so if we are not sending the height it's going to take a default height that's a K toolbar height so let's see what is the size that's 56 that's provided by flutter okay 
so by default it's going to take a height of 56 okay so if i go to the preferred size so let me click on it so you can go to the preferred size you can see that it's in it's implementing a preferred size widget right that implements a widget and we need to override a method so that's the method we need to override so i'm just copying it and pasting it there add the override okay and we need to return the height from here so size dot from height and pass in our height okay and we need to have the build method and return the uh, widget from here so height will be preferred size dot height and uh, i'm going to set the color which is colors dot red and the third parameter alignment i'm setting the alignment to center and fourth parameter is the child which is the child that we are sending in okay i'm going to command out this app bar and we are going to use our app bar component that is so if you use a simple container here that's going, not going to work right so i'm using our component and i'm going to pass in the row that's going to have a text so you can see that the text is there so you can customize it uh, any way you want so uh, let me uh, let's style it so height 120 okay so you can see that the height is increased and i'm setting the cross axis alignment to center and main axis alignment also to center okay uh, all right our text is in center now okay now i want the icon button okay which is a settings icon and uh, i want to put the text inside a expanded widget and i want to center the text so go inside the text widget and set the text align to center okay now the text is centered now let's go to the abba component and i want to set a color to the abba so let me add a variable color and i'm gonna set the container color to the past in color so if it is null you can do the null check like this as well uh, no need of any ternary operator okay so you can see that we are not sending any colors so by default it's setting it to red now let's try changing the color in a dynamic way okay so for that we need a package we need to save the state in some way right so let's use the provider package i have already made a tutorial on providers i'll be adding it in the description below this video okay so let's copy the package and go to our pubspec yaml file and add it below the dependencies section and call flutter packages get in the terminal and install the package okay now let's close this file and i'm going to create a new file named app settings okay in the utils folder now let's write a new class app settings that extends change notifier and i'm going to declare a variable color app color so default is the teal color and a getter for this variable app color okay and uh, okay now let's go to the setting screen and i'm going to copy this colors variable the whole array and uh, keep it in the app settings okay now let's write a function to update the color so update color i'm going to pass in the index and set app color is equal to colors of index and this is the main part called notify listeners so wherever this variable is used it's going to be notified or refreshed okay so for that we need to do a main thing before that uh, let me copy this colors and keep it in a different file constants since it's a constant right so those are defined set of colors okay uh, you can make it a constant or whatever you want okay so that's not important really uh, so let me import the constants here in the settings screen and call constants dot colors dot length and constants dot colors of index 
okay all right so it's there now let's go to the main.dart file so here is the most important thing whichever widgets uh, that want to uh, listen to the changes of a particular variable in the change notifier class needs to be inside a provider widget so the widget is actually multi provider it's going to take a list of providers so you can have more than one notifier class right so here we have only one notifier class which is called app settings okay so i'm going to provide that and uh, so that means if there is any change in the app color our whole widget the whole app widget is going to be notified okay wherever the app app color variable is being used so here uh, we need to provide the child that's our whole app the material app which is a root so whenever the variable is updated the whole app is going to be notified okay so that's the idea so whenever the app color variable changes so it's going to call the notify listeners which is going to notify our whole app in this case okay because we have wrapped it in the root of our app right so let me uh, wrap the settings color cell inside a gesture detector and uh, let me import the provider here so here is the important part we need to update the color and call the update color function right which is in the app settings right so we need to get the app settings instance so this is how we do it to set or update a variable we need to have we need to call context.read with app settings dot update color and we are passing in the index okay so we have updated it but we have not read it right so the functions are a little bit confusing but this is how we need to use so i'm going to change the abba color when the user chooses it okay chooses a color so that will be context dot watch and pass in the app settings dot app color okay let's see if that's working i'm gonna restart the app click on login so you can see that it's a teal color that's a default color and when you click on a particular color the abba is changed because we are reading it here right so this can be applied to any widget so that's why I had sent a color to each widget. So if I change the button color in the login, let me import the package. Okay. Provider. Okay. So if I refresh that, you can see that that's a default color. But if I change it, it's going to change the button color in the login screen, but uh, we don't have any way to go back, right? So. You can save it in some preferences and uh, you can load it back so we are not going to do it here okay so that is the basic setup that is working so these are some of the advantages when we write widgets in this way it's it can be very reusable and easy to maintain the code and the code will be really simple okay so let's go to our color cell and i'm going to add a child here so when the user taps on it i want to change i want to add a check mark at the center of the color cell when it matches the color okay so so i'm going to match the app color with the color passed in so that's the present color of this cell then i'll be showing a check mark with the white color so it's already there so you can see right okay so that's a good visual indication that it's selected okay so why don't we change the color of the home screen background like this okay let's see okay it's changed perfect all right so let's go to the app settings sorry the settings screen and set the background color for the app bar so you can see it right away right okay I'm setting it to alignment to center and that adding a space okay that looks good all right i want the color cell to be a little bit bigger so i just want to change the width and height right okay 80. so wherever you use this color cell in your app it's going to change there 
and you can set any style you want it's going to affect the whole uh, app wherever this component is used so it will be completely reusable so that's the right way to do it and one more thing to remember is that your reusable widgets should be stateless it should not hold any state of its own that is a recommended way but uh, you can make it stateful also but uh, try to keep the state out of the uh, that particular reusable widget as much as possible so that is the recommended way to do it okay I have provided the link to the source code the plugins that I used and also the written article in the description please go and check it out also please comment on it so that's all in this video hope you learned something from it so if you do please don't forget to like subscribe and share that will be a big support for me and uh, hit the bell icon for notifications so that you'll get instant notifications when I upload a new video okay and also please leave your valuable comments in the comment section below this video thanks for watching and see you in the next video until then bye